Hello, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, we're going to go over the polygon primitive options on how to create uh, different polygons, different polygon shapes. So what I have right here is just a demonstration of all different types of shapes that you could create within Maya by using the options within the polygon primitives. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new document. I'm going to start off with something, um, start off with a new scene. I'm not going to save this. So right here, I am in my perspective window. So I want to remind you that if you have your cursor within this window and you just tap the space bar, tap, you get your four uh, windows. I want to make sure that I'm in the perspective for right now. So I'm going to move my cursor in here to the perspective and just tap again. Uh, another option is over here on the far left, you can press these buttons right here. These are some default uh, uh, workspaces. If I go right here, I'm already here on this one, the perspective. I'll click right here, the four panels, or I can go back to my perspective. All right, so what I want to do, I want to go into the file menu up on top, and I'm going to go into create, and right here in the create menu, this is where you're able to create different shapes. Uh, we have nerve primitive, primitives, polygon primitives, volume primitives, lights, cameras, curve tool, etc. I want to focus on the polygon primitives for right now. We're going to use this window a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor over here to the top, and I'm going to click up here to tear off this menu. Click, and now we have this. For right now, I'm going to turn off interactive creation. We'll go over that a little bit later uh, during this demonstration. But right now, I want to explore some of these options. For any of these options, uh, whatever you have as your default settings, if you just press Sphere, for example, it's going to create uh, an object with, with your default settings. I'm going to go into the option box for right now because I don't know if I've changed my settings. My, chain, my settings have not been changed. I'm going to go to Edit and Reset just to give me my default settings. I'm going to close this just to show you. Now, if I go to my sphere and just click on the button, it's going to create, at the origin axis in the center of the universe here, uh, a sphere with whatever those settings were. So I'm going to use my move tool for right now. Uh, it's right here. Or I could press uh, W on my keyboard so that I could m move this off to the side. I'm just going to move it off to the side right here. Uh, this gives me another op opportunity as well. I could, by clicking on one of these arrows, I'm just moving it along one axis. But notice how we also have these little other floating uh, boxes. Right here we have, this one right here is going to lock your movement along a plane, along uh, X and Z. So if I click and drag this one, it's locking it to that plane. You could also lock it according to this one, the red one is going to be Y, which is the green is Y, the blue is uh, Z, so I can move it that way, or I can lock it along X and Y. I want to click on this one just to kind of move it off to the side for right now. I'm going to go back into the sphere option box because I also want to talk about each one of these polygon primitives has different options. So I'm not going to go over each one of them. I do want you to explore what you have available. Uh, some of these, they do have a mi minimum. Uh, you can't have a radius of zero. If you change any of these, it's like, oh no, I've selected something and changed the settings. You go to edit, you can tell it to reset your settings. And it gives you the default settings uh, for that object. For right now, what I want to do, I want to show you I'm going, to, I'm going to lower this to the minimum for the axis divisions and height divisions. These are going to be three and three. Down here at the windows, uh, many of the windows within Maya have the three options. Close will close this window down without executing the command. Create will execute the command and close the window, where apply will execute execute the command, yet leave this window open again for further use. And in this case, I just want to click on Create. And now what I have here, notice how both of these two spheres are vastly different. 
They're both created, but they have different settings. This is the default one. And this one has my custom settings. And if I go into the inputs down here, for I have my sphere, this is sphere two selected under inputs. And I do have my channel box located right here. I should mention that as well. Uh, channel box is this button up here. And it says over here on the tab on the far right, channel box. With that sphere, sphere selected under inputs, notice that you could cha still change how many, uh, what is called the construction history. You could change how it was created at this point. The subdivision axis and subdivision heights, I could still change. You could either go in here and change them uh, by manually entering numbers. Say I want this actually to be looking at the axis divisions. It's up on top. What if I tell it to be four? Oh, I'm sorry. I press. I, I did not have this selected. Okay, now if I press four, what happened there is it's a, I press four, which gives me the wireframe mode. I press five to give me the shader mode. Uh, in this case, I wanted to enter a value four right here. So that's what happened there. All right. So I, I, I just entered four. You can see now it has four divisions. I could go back in here uh, and say, what if I don't want four? What if I want 10? And now I have more divisions. So notice that if you give it more subdivisions here, it's going to get rounder. What if I decide that I want this to be 40? You can see that it, it's a lot more round along the axis. I'm going to bring this back down to just four. And then when we have the subdivision heights, you could also change this one. But instead of adding a number here, I want to show you another way of being able to change this value. Instead of putting my cursor here and having to in, uh, manually enter a value, I'm going to click on the word right here, subdivision heights. Now I'm going to move my cursor within the window. And with your three button mouse, I'm going to press and hold down the middle mouse button. I'm not pressing any modifier keys, just the middle mouse button. And now notice how you have this arrow. What this becomes, it becomes a slider that goes left to right. If I drag to the left, well, right now it's the minimum at three, but if I drag towards the right, notice that it's adding values. Now that I have 18 subdivision heights, I could now move towards the left and notice how it's going down. Now this is not specific to only this tool. This works for all of the different options uh, that have a value that you could change uh, within the uh, channel box. For example, if I go here to scale, I'll say scale Y, and if I, I click, I'm sorry, not scale, tr I, I selected translate X, and translate X is this one right here. And if I move my cursor here, middle mouse click, and drag either towards the left, and now it's not moving it towards the left because I'm moving it towards the left. It's because the X value is going in that direction. I'm going towards the left, which is lowering my value of translate X. If I drag toward the right, it's increasing my value for translate X. For example, let me go ahead and move my view. My middle mouse clicking, I still have translate X selected and notice how as I move it Okay, I guess, I guess it doesn't want to move right here. I guess it's still up and down, but I should be able to move it. But you are able to change that value instead of entering a value here. So you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and reset this to zero for right now. But that's something that I want to point out as you are working with creating your different shapes. But one of the things that I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and move this off to the side and I'll click on this one. Again, I'm using my move tool. Go ahead and create the shapes and just to explore what you're able to do. Uh, for example, if I click on the cube option box, I just want to make sure that my settings are reset. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create. You get the, the different shapes that you're able to create. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select cylinder. You can see that you have right here. But let me go into the cylinder. If you go into the input for the cylinder, you notice that you have different options as well here that you could also change. Uh, say, for example, subdivisions along height. Maybe I want multiple ones. And this is going to be this is going to come in handy later on as we start to edit these different shapes. I definitely want you to explore all the different shapes that you're able to create. 
uh, there's all these shapes to explore. Uh, but also what I want to do, I also want to show you what the interactive creation does. I'm going to go ahead and turn on interactive creation. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with the sphere. Notice that now we get some instructions. And so these instructions could also be found down here on the bottom in the what's called the, uh, uh, the what is the status bar. Uh, I have to click and drag. And it's clicking and dragging wherever I'm... Um, I have my mouse at. I'm going to go to the cube and it's going to tell you is gra drag the base on the grid then pull up. So I'm going to drag on the base and now my second now dr drag to set the height and it creates my shape. Now depending on whatever settings you have those settings could also come into play. This one has 111 one, one for the subdivision so it also has that. But I could still change this so say for example here I want to change these all to 444, four, four. return. So now I have this, this cube. And why might, might you want more subdivisions? Depending on what you're trying to model. Uh, if I was just modeling a crate, yes, just the one size would be fine. But if each of these sides were going to be coming in and out, I would want to change them over time. Uh, some of these are a little bit more complex. So say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, I'm going to select the torus, drag on grid, so I'm dragging on the grid, and then it says drag to edit the section radius, there we go. There is some, like say for example, uh, the pipe, which has multiple ones, drag on the base for the, on the grid, set the height, and now set the thickness. So there you go. So I do want you, I'm going to go ahead and turn off uh, interactive creation. There's all these different shapes, and each one of them also has their own options. If I go back into the pipe, for example, option box, you can see that it has different settings that you have right here. Sometimes I just like creating the shape and then going into the inputs so that I could interactively see what these settings are. Here's the radius, here's the height the thickness, if I want to change my subdivisions, so say I want uh, something that's really blocky, here it goes six sides, if I want divisions along the height, subdivisions along the cap, which is up here, uh, create UVs, we haven't gone over your UVs just yet, so by all means, have fun with this. Here's uh, this gear. It looks pretty cool. But what's really cool is once you st start going into the inputs, maybe I want less sides. So I'm creating, again, here's five sides. Uh, the radius. Here's the internal radius. Maybe I want it right here. The height. my divisions, maybe I don't want as many divisions, gear spacing, gear offset, so you see how they were really small right here, I'm going to bring them out, gear tip, I'll take that, gear middle, do I want it to kind of have a little bulge, here I could uh it's stopping at one, but you could uh, I could change this one point one point two. Let's see, a twist. So we got a, a twist that we got going on here. And do I want a taper? There we go. Let me go ahead and go, I'm gonna change the height. I'm gonna bring it down a bit. Just, just so you can see what got. Maybe I do want, I do want to do a taper, but I wanted to go ahead, have it go inward. It's kind of like a, a radiator fan. I think it's too much for that taper. But there you go. By all means, explore with the different shapes that you're able to create. Uh, one thing about these super shapes down here, I looked into them. These were sort of new. 
new to me at least, in that these shapes are, you're able to create more organic shapes with these different shapes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a super ellipse. I'm going to move this over here to the front, but then check out all of these different settings that it has under the inputs. So if I change the ellipse size one, you get some cool stuff like this. So it looks almost like a, a diamond. But then we can have another ellipse number two. Let's see, does this do anything now? So it is, uh, really it's, I'm um, exploring. So by all means, explore, see what it, it's able to do. Now some of these have more options that you can see what's going on. Let's see, what happens if I go to Ultra now? Ultra 1. But by all means, explore and see what you're able to create with these shapes. All right, so this is like an exploration of polygon primitives. Have fun with this. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, I'll see you in the next video.